Hey guys, Andy Figure Therapy here today, and uh, we're we'll be checking out this uh, Saber Altar, or no, one seventh Kadokawa Saber Altar Kimono figure from Fate Day Night Heaven's Feel. So uh, I said I would be doing more uh, Fate related goodies, um, so I'm gonna go ahead and throw this one out. Uh, this is I actually just got this one, and this one is actually quite the pretty penny. Um, now, uh, what's interesting is Kadokawa is trying to produce this line of figures called um, Kado Collection or something. It's up in the right corner. But um, basically, it's their line of like premium figures, kind of like how Aniplex has their Aniplex statues. And um, yeah, so um, that being said, I've never picked up a Kadokawa like statue. But as far as I can tell, a lot of the cool ones, or a lot of like the um, Konosuba ones, have been very nice in terms of quality. Um, so hopefully this one's good. But the thing that struck me the most about this figure is actually just how nice it looks already off the bat because think about it look at this box this box is crazy like all this gold foil which is great it really does remind me of a more traditional like um traditional japanese bowls where it has like the gold leaf in it and then um all this cool stuff a little bit weird that this is all warped uh, i think that just might be like i don't know if that's actually the box quality but um i still like the print on it which is nice there's a very pretty figure of uh saber altar in the back and then um you know the information down here uh new type and then dengeki hobby and then nothing on the bottom and then the top just says uh, Saber Altar. I can't really fit the whole box in the frame just because it's so large. But uh, hopefully the figure will fit in the frame. But um, yeah, so this figure came out um, around um, December of last year. So 1220. And uh, retailed for around two or 24,000 yen, which is around $240 um, USD. Uh, what, how this figure actually came about is it's actually based off of a uh illustration on in new type so new type is a japanese magazine that it is um based or there's a lot of like anime related news on there which is uh it's a fun magazine there's a lot of cool stuff in there you can kind of see all the new stuff and then also um every magazine has a poster or two uh, usually it's a poster with a um like a flip side a lot of the new type posters are nice they're not just like standard stuff uh watch as i flip this over and uh hopefully nothing gets broken but um i'm trying my best to be careful with this especially with how big it is and it's actually pretty heavy so um that being said let me just go ahead ah, and maneuver this yeah this box is big um and the figure is big as well but good thing there's like tape, or there's not tape, but it's it's pretty well classed in there, so I don't really have to worry about it falling down. Um, so yeah, it does come with instructions. Um, it just there's no actual like, what is it, like actual pictures? It's just handling instructions. And then let's just throw that back there, and there is the inside of the box. Very nice. So let's go ahead and take a look at this figure. I will go off and say that I have yet to watch Heaven's Feel. Um, in my world, I guess, uh, Camelot actually just came out, which is uh, cool. So i um, going to find a way to watch that. <laughs> but um, yeah, um, Camelot just came out. I heard it was pretty bad. I'm a little worried because I do like Camelot. I did like the story for Camelot, and I do like the um, characters that appear in Camelot. Uh, I thought Babylonia was great. I loved Babylonia, especially with just how they handled the series. Um, I forget, is it Silver Fox that did it? Or like Missing Link? I forget what the, the studio that did Babylonia did. But um, yeah, but also I hear that Heaven's Feel is amazing just because it's ufotable. Um, they're movies, so they put a lot more budget into the movies. But um, yeah. And Saber Ulster is cool. All, I swear, all the Ulster figures are always better in terms of just like their pose and just all the stuff they come with, it's crazy. Um, let's see how it gets out. So a lot of the weight is actually from her, which is awesome. And I, I love that. It's It feels like a heavy statue. Um, kind of like, because there's just a lot of PVC in her base, especially with her um, her jacket, or her, not her jacket, ah, her kimono. Disrespecting cultures there, but um, yeah, so let me go ahead and take out all this stuff There's a lot of protective stuff in here, which is good because there's a lot of patterns on the statue itself So it's nice to have all this protective um, Stuff but also kind of annoying to deal with. Oh, I'm just gonna toss it off. Okay. All right Getting all these protective materials out of there 
Um, let's go ahead and take a look at this uh, umbrella first. Now, um, my experience with umbrellas has been pretty bad because I had, or I still have the um, the Utaha from. I forget what company it is actually from. I think it's Fat. Um, but yeah, there was a uh, Utaha kimono, and there was also like an Eridi kimono and a Kato kimono, and she came. Utaha came with this umbrella. And the umbrella would never stay in her hand. It would always fall off. And I always worried because I thought it would, like, these are relatively sharp bits and they can scratch paint. If, if like, you know, say if it's, like, she's holding it and all of a sudden it just falls down, it'll just scratch, like, a, a big part of her hair out. And I was like, oh, okay. So that was always kind of annoying. But this one feels pretty solid. Um, there, I believe this is a metal handle, which is nice. But I still want to go trying to break it or anything. Um, what's cool is the molding right here. Um... It's almost like a real umbrella where there's a lot of like um, individual parts. It feels good. It kind of does sound a little bit like like wood, like the, the, the kind of like, I'm not sure sure what kind of use the word uh, wood that they use on the real um, like non-collapsible umbrellas. But, you know, it, it does sound like a, a uh, thinner quality wood, which is cool. So let's go ahead and... Oh, wait, actually, let's take a look at the top really quick. What's That's some pretty nice shading across the top, which is nice as well and this gradient that runs across the the white part that's pretty nice okay so let's take a look at the goodies right here so like i said this figure is very heavy um a lot of the weight is right here and um yeah that's pretty much it but a lot of these detail is really great like just holding it i really love how well they um is it pad printing? It almost feels like like they, they put a decal on it and just, you know, wow. That is really nice. Um, now, these these uh, flower patterns run all across her kimono. Um, there's actually really nice details even in hidden areas. So if you notice down there behind this um, kind of like fur part, there's a lot of really nice um, gold foil in the back. And also even underneath um, the obi, which is great. Um, yeah, wow, that's that's really nice attention to detail. But, um, yeah, that's really nice. Um, I keep saying that's really nice, but it's just because it's so nice. <laughs> yeah, um, and then there's some nice, there's more uh, patterns that run inside of her uh, kimono as well. And uh, her shoes are cool because they're the same material or similar material, um, like, color-wise to the base. So remember how earlier I was talking about, like, Japanese bowls and stuff, um, kind of like the ones, like those bento bowls, but, um, yeah, it's a very similar material, like, it almost emulates that, where it's kind of like, um, like a plastic, in a sense, uh, I'm not too sure what the, like, if you're talking about, like, real authentic ones are made out of, but, um, yeah, let's go ahead, what's cool is these pegs are actually really thick, which is awesome, and also, in addition, she's just so heavy that I don't think she's gonna go anywhere anyways, so, yeah, let's go ahead and peg her in kind of fighting it um a little bit sketchy but um okay so as far as i can tell she is in there but what's also kind of weird is there's a there's a good amount of gap in between her feet and the actual uh, base that being said i think did i put her in like the wrong orientation that wouldn't make sense though here or er, Man, now, now I feel bad. I, I don't know. I don't think I can get that out easily. But, um, yeah. <laughs> Let's go ahead and take a closer look. So, looking at her head, um, the expression, pretty nice. <laughs> uh, it's very Saber Alter. Um, you know, Saber Alter, I feel like, or any of the Alter for that fact, Whenever they're just like chilling, they always just look so edgy, like you know the, uh, you know RBF sort of vibe. But then you know when they're like chuny as fuck or whatever, or like you know they're cute, you know that's that's when they really shine. Um, now let me go ahead and see how I should do this umbrella, because okay, so basically the umbrella just fits in here, and then it'll just sit on her shoulder, kind of like that. Okay, yeah, that, that, yeah, I buy that. Okay, <laughs> um, but yeah, so, like I said, this is kind of worrisome just because of how the uh, Utaha had the same thing, where basically, um, like, it would sit on her shoulder between her hair, and it would still fall down, so I have no idea why it kept doing that. 
but luckily it looks pretty good so far and um definitely lends to the pose a little bit so yeah now uh even though it's quite the large figure there is a good amount of shading especially in the um the the ruffles of the kimono now a uh, darker colored uh, stuff is always hard to get that shading right just because you're already working with a darker color So adding an even darker color sometimes might look a little off now uh, Also another big thing that I like to compliment is that the fur now I actually don't like sculpted fur I think it's a little weird, but um the sculpted fur on this is actually really well done It does remind me of the the mosh dangerous beast that I did not too long ago and um, that one was not too bad as well so yeah Very nice. There's a lot of good detail, especially in her hair, too. Let me see if I can actually close up on this, just because I don't want you guys to miss this. Uh, just for, like, safety's sake, I'll take this umbrella down for now. And then uh, you guys can go ahead and check out the hair. Wow. So there's a lot of uh, really nice um, flower detail. Uh, what's also cool is that the uh, ribbons in her hair do have a pattern as well. Not too sure how well that's catching. But um, yeah, if anything, I'll just throw a little reel at the end of me just doing close-ups. That way it's easier. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of really nice detail. Um, now, that being said, now we talk about price. So... Um, as of this moment, she can run you around, uh, brand new of course, uh, can run you around, um, 300-ish to, like, 360. I've seen it as high as 360, which is a little high for a figure. Um, now, that being said, um, Katakawa definitely proved themselves with this figure, meaning that a lot of the figures that, of course, moving on will probably be better. No, I don't think they'll get worse. Um, but yes. In any case, this statue is very nice, for fake collectors especially. Now, that being said, there's also a lot of um, like fake statues that aren't really kimonos, so this is kind of like maybe a bit of a one-off thing, because, you know, I, off the top of my head, I don't think I know any fake statues that are kimonos, but um, in any case, it's pretty nice. Um, ideally, I think the best price to pay for this would be around the 240 range, maybe as high as 260, which is a pretty good steal. Um, after that, you know, that's up to your discretion how much you really want the statue. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you guys next time.